Hi guys, welcome to my channel Practical Reefer. My name's Mark. Um, this is week five of my 20 gallon budget nano reef tank build. Um, so every week I'm going to show you how to set up, maintain and, and run a reef tank for a whole year for just £500 um, and I'm going to be doing it myself. Um, so just a quick update this week, the, the rock continues to cycle, my hair continues to grow and the barbers continue to stay closed. Um, what I'm going to be going over this week is going to be the, the power to all the kit, um, the filtration, flow and heating of the tank. Um, so I'm just going to show you how I'm going to do that there and how sort of all those elements come together. Um, might not be big news to anyone, um, but it's just how I plan to do it. It is on a budget as well, so it might be interesting for some people if they're looking to start up a, a small tank. Um, there's nothing really complicated about the way I'm going to be doing it, but it, it should all work very well. Um, so just a quick start, and you can do this totally differently if you want to, but just for the sake of me, I'll be showing this next week, I'm actually going to show the pricing for everything together for the sort of the 500 quid for the year, um, but included in that, um, just a, a tool station, six gang um, surge protected adapter. There is a cheeky little two plug um, unit which I'm going to put both the filters onto, which are only like uh, six or eight watt uh, motors on them. But it just means I can unplug that one plug and both my hang on backs are just connected then and I can pull them off for maintenance and stuff like that. So it makes it easier. And then I've got two timers there which I'm going to be running the lights off. That will be a whole other discussion in itself. Um, I'm trying something else, a bit of a test on the lighting, so we'll come back to that. But there'll be two, two hanging backs on there. There'll be two separate heaters, a potential for a, a wave maker um, or power head, and then the, the two lights will be going on there. So quite a simple thing there. It's coming to about 20 quid for the, the extension, um, the two plug uh, adapter, and then the, the two timers and another four quid each. But I'll go into more detail on that on a, a different video. And it'll be next week. Um, I'll break down absolutely everything that I'm using and also maintenance kit for the whole year and stuff like that although some of that's going to be included in here. So covered the, the power there. Um, the way I'm going to heat the aquarium I'm actually going to use two undersized heaters. Um, so I've done a separate video for this you might want to use something totally different again but this is just what I'm going to be using. So I'm using the Alcon Solutions uh, AH50 heater. Um, again pretty much everything or 90% of what you see in this picture here um, was bought from Alcon Solutions and it just so happened to have 10% on. They have these on quite a few times. I have nothing to do with Alcon Solutions, but um, I'd been looking at it for months and, and over the months I was looking at the kit, there was quite a few times where the 10% came on. So then I just waited um, and got it all just to, to do it that way. But I'm going to be using two of these. So the, the ideal sized heater for this size of tank, which is a, this is a 600 by 400 by 400 millimeter tank. So it's a 90 litre, 20 gallon tank is um, 100 watts, which would heat 90 to 130 litres. Um, so I've got two of the 50 watts, which will heat 40 to 60 litres. So the, the intention there is probably your, a big thing that's, that seems to come out now is people are using ink birds to protect themselves against heat or failure. Now in a number of years of aquarium keeping in the past, I've never had a heater fail on me, yet I don't ever want to have a heater fail on me. So I've decided to kind of go in the middle ground um, and use two 50 watt heaters. Now these will, you know, they'll give you 100 watts of heating power and they'll heat the tank no problem. Um, I don't keep a particularly warm house as well. That's something to watch. If your house is really warm in the first place, um, a broken heater which is failed on can do more damage. You've got a house that's sitting at 20 plus degrees inside if you're, you know, you're a cold person, um, and then a 100 watt and doesn't switch off, then you've got a problem. Um, as well, I this is going to be my home office. I'm going to be in here nearly every day, and even at the weekend, I come in here as well, um, in and out to do bits and pieces. So I'll be checking the temperature. If one of these fails, um, it's going to take a bit of time for it to heat up the tank more than it, it should be, and the maximum temperature that it will be able to heat the tank to will be it'll be in in a danger zone. It's not in a, it's not going to be in a good place, but I will spot it before it becomes an issue, and I can unplug that heater. And then the remaining heater can limp along until I can pop in a, another one just to keep keep things steady. So that's my plan there. If you want to take it a step further, um, ink burns are about £35, which to be fair isn't a lot of money. But when you're just getting started up, you know, I'm going to start with two of these. Maybe later in the year or next year I can add an ink bird just for that ed, added extra piece of skew. Especially when you start adding more corals and stuff, ink birds may be a good shout. But I'm going with two half-sized heaters, so if one of them does fail, it's not going to cook your tank and it's going to take longer to kind of step up the temperature. So that's my plan there. 
Um, so my plan for, for filtration, I'm going to be using two of the All Pond Solutions um, 600-HO hang on back filters. Now, this is purely for mechanical filtration. So what I'll be using, I have bought on eBay for £2.50 um, was five of these little sponge pre-filters. My hair is wild. Um, so these, I, I bought some before and I bought the ones that were about, I had a 10 mil diameter hole, which go on, but it's, um, that's actually the one I've got in there. It's a bit of a tight fit and it is a struggle to get it on. So I kind of bought these in there, which are a bit tight. Go for, if you're looking at one on eBay, go for one with a 20 mil opening um, and it gets on much further. So that's just a pre-spun, so that'll come off every week when I'm doing maintenance and stuff. Um, but that's that's the plan there. So I've got five of those, so you know, a couple of you know, if I have some sort of uh, inhabitant of the tank that likes to chew things, or they just get a bit old and get a bit worn, they can be replaced. But there's you know, there's there's five there. I'll be using two at a time. So using two of these hang on back filters, um, they are the I think they're twelve quid um, new. But again, I got ten percent. Um, and it's purely just going to be a, a block sponge. So once it goes past the pre-filter, um, which is quite coarse, then this is a sort of medium to coarse sponge. I did have big plans, um, and you'll see in my other video, and I bought it, which I'm not going to use, uh, was the pond sponges where you get the blue, green and black, so it's like a, a coarse, medium and fine. And then I was going to put um, filter floss. And it was just to try and, you know, give me more filter media and a little bit of biological and, I was going to cut them up so they were the same size as these blocks and then I was going to have a bit more depth of mechanical and obviously the different stages so it would take longer for it to clog up but I was going to have to then take three sponges out and try and you know, get them back together exactly and fit them back into the filter so I decided just to stick with the original sponges that come with it um, and then I bought uh, four meters of filter floss off eBay and I think that was eight pounds um so you'll get about that sort of price on ebay so they're 50 centimeter by meter sheets and i've got four of them. more of these you buy the cheaper they get you, you probably get one of them for about four pounds and then i've got four of them for eight so but working that out these sponges are i've got a bit of paper i brought notes these are about six and a half centimeters by 13 centimeters so going by seven by 14 centimeters just to um round it up slightly Seven, seven times seven is 49, so you're 50 centimetres wide. So you'll get seven wide um, on the, the pads, and then you're 14 centimetres times five is 70, and then another two is 28, so 98 centimetres long. So you basically get seven by seven, which is 49 squares of filter floss, just slightly bigger than this sponge. Um, and then I've got four of them. So these, each of these filters, I've got two of these filters with two of these blocks each, and basically each one of these sheets will give me 49 pads so i'll have enough for four every week and um, minus three weeks but i'm taking a couple of weeks to cycle rock so pretty much bang on um you do also get just in the bottom of the picture here you do get a filter pad with carbon built into them with the filters but they're a quid or something um i don't know they're not expensive but there's there's a few weeks worth um Probably not going to use them. Probably quite an expensive way to do it. They're not. They're not over expensive, but you know, a couple of quid a month kind of adds up over the year. So that's what I'm going with the floss there. And I also have a um, 500 grams of activated carbon. Now the, the kind of rule of thumb generally is to use about 50 grams or 50 milliliters. They, they kind of equal out um, in terms of like if you've got a measuring cup rather than scales, about 50 milliliters. And all the measuring cups probably about 50 grams of carbon. Um, is enough to do about a 100 litre tank. And there's kind of varying thoughts on, do you change it every two weeks? Do you change it every four weeks? Um, but what I'll probably do is add half the amount of carbon to the tank every two weeks, and then into the different the two different filters. So after 14 days, this efficiency starts to drop, but it still has some, uh, some availability and, and pores and, and for to, to absorb materials. So every two weeks I'll put carbon in each one but sort of a half dose so there'll always be the full amount but one of them will be tapering off and then there'll be a new one going in so so that's enough might not even run carbon it might it might be something that I don't need with the the sponges the filter floss um but we'll see how we go 
the, the one thing as well with these filters, I mean, they're, they're £12 each. I did look at the, the Aquiel FZN3, which is a cracking looking pan on back filter. Um, it's got massive big media trays on the back, which has a sponge that beautifully fits in. It's a slightly rounded shape, just kind of awkward if you were going to cut sponges. But if you were going to just cut in maybe like uh, layers of sponge and then bio media or something like that, it'd be really good if you maybe had a scape left rocking or something. Um, but I quite like that filter, but it's about £35-£40 for just one. And part of why I'm using two of the hanging back filters is for redundancy. So if one of these filters fails, you know, they're, they're a cheap and cheerful filter. If it, for any reason it fails, I've got a 12-month warranty on it. And also the other one will still be kicking over. So I'll still have filtration going on in my tank. Um, and I'm in here every day. But I don't expect them to fail. But for me, there's a lot of chat on BRS TV of like heaters failing, pumps failing. Um, which makes me nervous about my 50 gallon tank with a sump with one return pump. I'm probably going to try and add a second return and have might drill the tank or something looking at that layer. It's not going to be set up for a year because I've got a lot to do at the house. But so that was kind of my thinking. I was like, if I go with a, a slightly cheaper filter, I'll get two of them. It'll also give me a good flow. I might not need the wave maker. Again, the wave maker, I've done a little separate video on it. So I don't actually have the, the wave maker to show you. It's kicking away in the cupboard there, turning over my, my live rock as it's cycling. So I've got the All Pond Solutions WM2000 wave maker. This will be to kick out any dead spots if I've got anything collecting or any areas where I think the flow is a bit low. Um, but my intention is with two of these hang on back filters both sucking up water from uh, about two thirds of the way down and then cycling it back over the top, there will be an overall flow through the tank. So we'll see how that goes. This probably will use this, but it, it, it's an option. It might not get used. Um, so that's kind of covering the flow there. There's also the tidal filters, which look cracking as well. They're massive, big um, media bays in them. So you can put all sorts in there. I think they include some stuff, but they actually kind of, they, the cost isn't too bad because they don't include much in the way of sponges or media. They, they expect you to go and do what you want because most people do. The other big bit of my filtration um, is in fact my live rock itself. My, uh, my 20 kilogram box of uh, DD Aquascape rock. Um, I am into this build for about 16 kilograms. So, why I would have used the Aquil FZN3 or a tidal filter would have been to, you know, a few layers of mechanical and then biomedia. But I went nuts for the scape and I've, I've used 16 kilograms. So, that works out. Um, a lot of people, a few places you'll Google, you're talking about one kilogram per 10 litres of uh, volume um, and I've got 16 kilograms for my 20 gallon so I'm sitting at about 1.78 kilograms per uh, 10 litres so I've got a good whack of live rock which is my biomedia so I have no intention of putting biomedia in these uh, hang on back filters I was looking originally I was like oh, I'll get some ceramic rings or I'll get some uh, max spec bio balls or something like that a, they're quite expensive, and B, I've got a huge amount of live rock in there. And the sand that's going in the bottom will be a decent, will be an inch, inch of that. It won't be too deep. It'll be well cleaned as well. Um, don't, wanna, don't have a big two, three inch sand bed. I know some people have success with that, but I plan to keep it just enough for the, the inverts and things to get in there, probably some Nassaria snail, uh, snails. Um, so yeah, that's my biomedia, is my live rock. Um, it's, it's, it's the perfect material. Um, obviously, if you've got a sump and you want to add biomedia in and have a, a larger bio load, but for me, with a sort of simple setup, um, it's going to be nice and easy. Grab these sponges out, give them a good squat, give them a good rinse, and every week, you know, the filter floss might last more than one or two weeks if you give it a rinse. Some people do that, but my intention is to just change it every week. Um, so, so that's how we'd be doing that. But yeah, big massive bag of filter floss there, eight quid, it does the whole year. With the carbon, I was five pound for 500 grams. I don't know if I went over that. But what I initially bought, if you've got an all-pond solutions, again, nothing to do with them, uh, you can get two kilograms for eight pounds, which is what I did buy. At the end of the year, If um, my aim is to use the 500 grams that I've priced into this, but if I use more than 500 grams, then I'll, I'll let you guys know at the end of the year. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty much it. That's going to be filtration. I'm going to set this up a little bit just to show you the, the filters on the back. Um, and again, but... So as we lock this air, and I don't think I, I said there as well, with my heating of the tank, 
I went super simple and reliable, which is a, a better glass thermometer, which you'll see in my, my video room, Cycle My Life Drop. I could pull it out now, but it's a glass thermometer. It costs three pounds. Um, it was just off eBay. Um, you can't really go wrong with it. Yeah, it's glass on glass. Just be careful not tapping it off the tank. But again, I've used glass thermometers for years and years, and they're, they're absolutely, they're on the nail. They're not going to tell you 0 0.8, 0 0.9, you know, you'd have to do it by eye a little bit, but um, if you want to get a bit fancy and spend a couple of quid more on a digital one, again, you know, you just, you can't go wrong with the glass thermometers. Um, I might have a digital one as well, just for me to look at and pass in, but probably, even if I had that on the back of the tank, um, probably tucked away this back corner here, um, facing the side, I would have a glass thermometer. Um, it, they've always done well. There's little LCD strips as well. You can get those for about a pound, and they, they kind of give you a good ballpark. Um, but I do, like, I do like the glass ones. To be, to be honest, that's that's my preference. But what I'll do, I'll um, I'll quickly set this up. I'll show it. I won't have the wave maker in. I'll um, I'll pop the two hang on backs on there just to let you see, um, and just give you a quick overview of the the tank with the, the free. And then next week, I'm going to be getting into actually putting some water in the tank. Now I've got the back of the tank painted. My, my rock cycling away, I've collected my water. I'm going off to do that just now to collect some more. Um, and soon I will be looking to get some fish, hopefully. Um, maybe have a couple of weeks in the tank, let things settle a bit. And, uh, but no, looking forward to it. Again, it, it's nothing magic. It's nothing, uh, there's, there's no mysteries of the universe that I'm giving you here. This is just how I plan to do it. But just to give you an overview of the filters are just for mechanical. The, the live rock is my biological. And I have the option of some carbon for some chemical. And again, a big thing in this is going to be um, decent water changes. I'm um, going to be at least doing 10% a week, probably 20, because I've got natural seawater. So I can kind of, if I can collect more, I can change more. But yeah, we'll just, I'll pop on the kit just to let you give you a quick overview. But, but that's just, this is kind of my theory behind how I plan to do the, the filtration for the tank. It's nothing fancy, but I think it will work well. And uh, I'll let you see that for just a, a minute there and we'll come back. So guys, bit of a longer commercial break than planned. Um, just been down at the local docks here on my keep, as in collecting natural seawater. Um, the company I bought the floss off, uh, we're not lying. Uh, 50 centimetres by a metre sheets. I actually got four of them for eight pounds. So I'll pack the other three back away and I'll cut a little section off of this one just to show you what it's like in the, the hang on backs. So guys, nice and simple there. Just make sure you've got a sharp pair of scissors and uh, you can cut yourself a square of floss. To, I was a bit generous with it. I made sure it, um, overlap the edges but it actually pretty much sticks to the, the pad anyway so I thought I was going to have to faff about with trying to make it stick in place and then just for that I've just um, chucked it into the filter and just make sure it's maybe tucked in at the sides. So this is my, my setup here um, obviously as I say it's quite a, a nice simple setup it's, I've got the two hanging backs there I've now cut the, uh, the pads for the floss. I've cut a few, maybe cut a couple of dozen now actually, but I've just popped four of them in there. I've left one of the lids open just for you to see. What I didn't mention is the um, these hang on back filters come with a, a surface skimmer. Um, so this will float up to the surface of the water and just allow for water to be sucked into the filter from the surface. So it just pulls off any um, scum or any uh, film from the top of the water. Might not run both of them, might take one of them off, but um, Certainly as well, the way I've kind of done the rockscape, it should hide these two downpipes. And I will have my, my heaters will probably sit just on the inside of these pipes here. And they'll be tucked away out of view as well. Um, and then the wave maker will probably go dead centre on the back or slightly off centre. Um, just to avoid the rock and it'll allow me just to, to put floor around the tank. Just on the, the floss there, I did have a quick look at All Pond Solutions. And they do the two inserts, which the ones that I showed you that came with the filter. Two of those are £5.50, so you'd be £11 to just change out the filter floss and the carbon um, in the, the filters, which is the cost of one of the filters with two of the pads, um, which I think is a bit, bit crazy. But you know, I can change out the floss, which I'll be doing weekly, which I think to have a, a floss and a carbon cartridge in a one hour is probably not the best idea because I reckon the floss would get filled pretty quickly and the carbon should last two to four weeks. Um, so for me, I'd be changing the floss every week, which I'll be doing here with these ones, which have cost me about four pence a little little uh, pad. Um, and then I've got a fibres worth of carbon, which should should do me across the, the, the year. So it'll be a lot cheaper than doing it with the, the cartridges. That's the thing, it's just kind of like printers, isn't it, where they absolutely slam you for the, the cost of the, the refills rather than the, the initial cost of the product. Um, 
But yeah, so so looking good there. Obviously, I'll, I won't be the heater on because it's just the suction cups work when it's wet. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the, the video. It was just to show you how I'm setting up my filtration for my tank. Um, and join me next week. I'll be filling the tank. I'll be switching all this equipment on. And I'll be putting in my live rock, which is cycling in the, the cupboard just now. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a little like and subscribe below. And uh, I'll catch you all next week.